Mac Brown has once again led North Carolina to a top 10 preseason ranking. This time coming nearly 25 years later after he did it in his final year of his first stint with the Tar Heels back in 1997. Since then, Mac Brown has won a national championship at Texas and also spent some time in the broadcasting world at ESPN. Now he's back trying to lead North Carolina into the championship conversation. So why is a team that went 15 and 10 over the last two years and just lost their top four skill position players to the NFL draft ranked in the top 10? Well, a lot of it has to do with their quarterback, Sam Howell. Back in 2008, the New York Yankees left their normal spring training facility in Tampa, Florida and went up to Blacksburg to face off with the Virginia Tech Hokies in an exhibition to remember the tragic events of April 16, 2007. Today, the Hokies will return the favor playing inside legendary Yankee Stadium and they will don the New York Yankees logo on the side of their helmet. Now, if that last name, Hackenberg, sounds a little bit familiar, that's because all three of his brothers are playing professional athletics. His oldest brother, Christian, possibly the most famous, was a three-year starting quarterback at Penn State and ended up playing in the NFL for the New York Jets. Then his next brother, Brandon, he was a first-round pick in the MLS draft after playing collegiate soccer at Penn State as well. Then finally, his next brother, Adam, he also played baseball and was just drafted in the 18th round by the White Sox just a year ago. And now Drew is trying to carve his own path to professional baseball, and he's off to a good start, maybe just a few years away from giving Mr. and Mrs. Hackenberg another jersey to buy off the shelves. Virginia Tech just reached the ACC championship for the first time in program history. The bad news for the Hokies, they have to face off with one of the greatest programs and the greatest coaches of all time in Mike Krzyzewski, who just reached his 22nd ACC championship game the most of all time. Going to be a tough task for this Hokies team, but the good news is they're 40 minutes away from going dancing. Start in the NBA, where one of the biggest stories all season has been the controversy around Kyrie Irving's vaccination status. I can tell you last night he didn't turn down any shots in a career performance. Irving lit up the magic in Orlando, scoring 42 points before halftime on his way to an even 60 on the night. Following up 54 from Kevin Durant on Sunday, that makes these two superstars the first two teammates ever to score 50 in back-to-back -back games. Now, Kenny Brooks turning around the Virginia Tech women's basketball program has been no easy feat, but it's been made a lot simpler with a bona fide superstar on the roster in Elizabeth Kitley. It seems like the revolving door of college football head coaches continues to spin faster in the last few years. You look at head coach Ed Orgeron down at LSU. He's out the door just two years removed from winning a national championship in Baton Rouge. On the hot seat as well, Virginia Tech head coach Justin Fuente. After a few subpar seasons in a row and now three straight losses all inside Lane Stadium, Duke and UNC meet for the first time in the NCAA tournament in the Final Four in what could be Coach K's final game. You couldn't script it any better. A champion will be crowned in New Orleans this weekend, and it'll be one of the usual suspects, the Blue Bloods. But even though the slipper didn't fit for an underdog this year, this could be one of the best Final Fours in recent memory. Welcome back to Brooklyn, Virginia Tech. An eight-point lead over Duke in the ACC Championship. 11 minutes to play. Hokies will have an inbounds after the foul on Williams. Near corner for Aluma. Now back out Couture. Off a pin down. Here's Aline in the near corner. His three off the front rim. No good. Into the hands of Moore and the Blue Devils. Moore to Bancaro in transition. Finds Roach near corner. He lets it fly off the back rim. In the air. Foul called. And that is on Aluma as he pulled down Theo John, who just checked in for Mark Williams. And that'll be his third. And quickly, David Gasson off the bench. That's a team sixth. Duke with four, but again, something to keep an eye on when these fouls come down the stretch. Blue Devils will be in the bonus the rest of the way, trailing by eight, 10.50 to go in this ACC title game. So Williams on the bench with four. Roach still in there with four as well. Moore will throw it in from the baseline, far side. Inside, Boncaro right back out, Moore wide open, corner three, bottoms for Moore. Duke back within five. Just the third three of the day for Duke, 59-54, ten and a half to play, Hokies on top, Gasson, well outside the arc, finds Mutz, handoff right back Murphy, halfway through the timer. 
Murphy's got Boncaro switched on him. Kicks, far corner, Aline, 10 to shoot. Inside, Mutz works against John. Five seconds, Mutz backs him down. Right hand hook, fouled, and one! Justin Mutz takes the contact and drops it through the hoop. Hokies lead by seven, they can make it eight with one more at the stripe. What a tough take there for Mutz. Battling his defender, and that's important for Virginia Tech as well, right? That's Duke foul number five. Foul called on Theo John, his third. Mutz at the line, won't complete the three-point play off the right rim, no good. Bancaro grabs the board. Moore in transition, hands off, Keels, right back, Bancaro on the left wing. Straight back to Keels, high ball screen, Theo John, switched on by Justin Mutz, finds Bancaro near short corner, drives, lowers the shoulder, foul called, and it's going the other way. Second offensive foul of the half, Bancaro gets his first 16 foul on Duke, and a huge turnover here, Duke fans don't like it. Coach K furious, furious on the court. Whistle did come in late. Krzyzewski all the way out to the midpoint of the court. He's on the floor right now, not pleased with that call. Hokies force the turnover there. Gasson heads to the bench. Back in comes Darius Maddox. We're over halfway through the second half in Brooklyn. 61-54, Hokies on top. Murphy across the timeline, finds Mutz far short corner. Maddox drives, now to Couture, top of the key. He's hit six threes today. Checked by Keels, left wing, a lean behind a screen, thought about the three. Ten seconds to shoot, switched on by Bancaro. Short corner, Mutz spins baseline, he lost it. Would have been an easy dunk at the rim for Justin Mutz, just couldn't handle it after he made the sweet move to the baseline. Turnover there, Duke takes possession down by seven. That's turnover number eight for Virginia Tech. Haven't been able to take care of the ball the way they want to, but the good thing for the Hokies, Duke hasn't been able to either, that's nine. Roach left wing, high screen, Bancaro. Looked for the pick and roll, couldn't find it. Swing it around, far corner, A.J. Griffin. Right back, heels top of the key. 15 to shoot, Griffin far side. Drives against Couture to the free throw line. Spins, low block, nowhere to go. Fade away, jumper from 10, off the rim and gets the friendly roll and down. Griffin brings the Blue Devils back within five. Simply a mismatch, it's happened so many times. Duke hasn't taken advantage right there, they do. Nine minutes to play, Murphy drives straight to the rack, crossover, right hand layup, scooped off the backboard and down. Storm Murphy, a clutch answer there. Hokies back up seven. And to put it simply, Jeremy Roach getting exposed on the defensive end by Tech guards. Roach has four, can't play as aggressively as he may like. Right back out the perimeter to his former high school teammate, Keels, almost lost it, right in the paint, right hand hook, he's fouled, comes up short, he goes to the line for two. Welcome back to Blacksburg, all tied up at three here in game two of this weekend, set between number five, Virginia Tech, and North Carolina. Jake Wyman, Shelby Glenn with you, and we're pleased to be joined by head coach Pete DeMoore of Virginia Tech. Coach, thanks for taking a couple minutes with us. You got it. Coach, give up that three-run homer in the top of the first. What have you liked about the way your team has responded? Um, we just have good at-bats, you know, and, and it's the same whether we're up three or down three. We just, um, we just keep plugging away, and um, we're having good at bat, so we'll score some more. This year you've come in as the leader, the captain in a way, in your third season. How have you tried to embrace that leadership role with a lot of the new guys coming into the team? Um, you know what, people show up in the summer and they're like, you know, it's just summer ball, it's just summer ball, and I don't know, I feel like, yeah, it's summer ball, but you still want to win. It's not going to be fun if you come and play summer ball and you just have a losing season. It's just, it's not going to go well, you know. Teams don't mesh, and this year it's been great. You know, I just tried to support my teammates and kind of spread that, and everyone supports everyone. And you know, we're we got some great team chemistry, and the atmosphere in the dugout, the atmosphere when we're all playing on the field, it's just it's great. It's a great to be a part of, and you know, it's, it's awesome. We are now joined before the second half by NC State head coach Tim Santoro. Coach, thanks for taking a few minutes here. I want to talk to you about Emily Gray. You talked to us earlier this week about trying to contain her. You're not going to stop her, but just trying to slow her down. How do you feel your team has been able to achieve that thus far? 
Yeah, I, I thought the front runners were a li little more dangerous. Emily was coming pretty deep to try to get involved, which was, you know, helped us a lot. But I thought uh, Kozlova and uh, and Powell, their, I thought their movement was really good, and uh, hopefully we sort that out a little bit. Wayne Stadium will be alive once again on Saturday. The first spring game for new football head coach Brent Pry for Virginia Tech. And then next week, Virginia gets to see Tony Elliott in action for the first time. Both games on the ACC Network. But Saturday, also a meaningful day for Virginia Tech. The anniversary of the shootings back on April 16th, 2007. It'll be a day of remembrance for this campus with the 3.2 for 32 run in the morning and Hokies commemorating that have a ribbon on the back of their helmet this weekend in remembrance. Certainly a great reminder that even though there's a lot of great things happening on campus as far as athletics this weekend that there's something bigger going on, um, something bigger to play for, bigger in life. And a lot of Hokie alumni in town this weekend as well. Sure, it's going to be a very special weekend on campus. And if you notice that helmet didn't belong to Addie Green, that's because Kelsey Brown is pinch hitting. Usual starter for the Hokies. Slapper from the left side, sends this out to left center. That's over the head of Van Ashen all the way to the wall. Brown's got speed into third she goes. It's a stand up triple to start off the fifth. Kelsey Brown is such a table setter for these Hokies, and as soon as she gets a chance, I mean, you make one mistake and she's going to make you pay for it. A smart move from Coach Demore to pencil her in here in the fifth. Kelsey Brown shows off the speed, gets into third as Van Ash stumbled trying to retreat back after that one. And maybe the breakthrough the Hokies needed here. Trailing one to nothing to their rival in the fifth. Allie Rail has been so good in the circle today. Again, holding this very dangerous Hokies order scoreless through four innings. But Brown maybe giving the Hokies that little lift that they needed to get on the scoreboard for the first time today. Jamie Bailey will be the, try to be the one who does it as the first baseman strides into the right side. Well, we talked with Coach Shamore about that, with, you know, his pinch hitters, his DPs, and just seems like everybody's come up, and when they when they do, when they get their opportunity, they're ready for it. And Kelsey Brown certainly was ready today. And we were saying his lineup movements and changes maybe make him look like a genius out there, putting the right girls in the right positions to make plays and certainly does it with Brown right there. He certainly has a knack with which ladies to play and at what time. And it seems like no, more often than not, he comes up and looks like a genius with it. Bailey out to left and that'll tie this game up. An RBI single for Jamie Bailey scores Kelsey Brown. Hokies finally break through. We're all even at one. And I think the crowd, you know, they have a rejuvenated energy now. Just a little something that they needed to get going, and maybe this gets this team going as well. And I'm sure these fans coming out here maybe didn't expect this game to be so close, seeing that number three next to Virginia Tech's name. And now finally coming to life as the Hokies are on the board. And a runner on first with nobody out. It'll be Mackenzie Lauder next. But first, it looks like we'll see a pitching change as Mike Roberts heads out to the circle. Joanna Harden talks with the umpires. We'll see a new pitcher in the circle for Virginia when we come back. We're all tied up in Blacksburg in this series opener.